Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me today. Earlier this week, I wanted to make another little pocket. And um, I've got stuff everywhere today. A while ago, I made these little ones, the little concertina pockets that could stick into your album. So, okay. But problem for me with those, as much as I liked them, is that they were still really large and I didn't necessarily always want so many concertinas. Now I could just attach these like I've done with this, but still end up with the same bit down here. I thought there's gotta be a way that I could do this with just the one little concertina in it where it's all one piece. And I'm sure they're out there. Let's face it, everything is already out there. So I started searching because I thought it'd be so much easier if there's already a template out there. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> came up with one that kind of looked like that and it showed that, you know, that doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Sat there and played around and, you know, you fold it and you do this. You can see that I've thrown a hissy at it in the end and then screwed it up. And it folded in here and it folded in there. Well, the flap was down there. That wasn't where I wanted the flap. Yet in the picture, it showed something like that. So I thought, right, I'm going to have to make one myself, which I did. <laughs> so I came up with a template to make one. Now, the template may look hard. It's not. I will... I'm hoping that's in shot. Mm, yes. Right. Screenshot that. Okay. I'll just leave it sitting there while I ramble on for a little bit. I have marked and measured everything out. I've done two or three of these now, so I know it works. <laughs> The one I've done, of course, you can change your measurements. Mine is four and a half by three and a half because it fits in most of the journals that I do, either that way or that way. I have made one of these during the week also, and it's already in a journal. So what we've got, this is your basic size you're going to end up with. So this is the measurement you need for whatever journal you're working on, which is then just doubled down here. So this one is four and a half by three and a half. So of course we're still four and a half in width, three and a half down, one and a quarter inches up, which is your flap. Now I've traced, I actually traced around a medicine cup because I couldn't find anything else, just the right size at the time. So I've marked my center point for my four and a half inches, which is two and a quarter inches. And I wanted a one and a half inch semicircle. So I've gone one and a quarter, I've gone three quarters of an inch either side of my center point, set my circle on there, my medicine cup, and just traced around it. And that's the easiest way to get that. These little guys, which are our flaps in. You go out one and a, one and one eighth of an inch. And again, one and one eighth of an inch. Now they actually drop down about five eighths of an inch, but you could keep it coming out. When you fold it, you then just trim it off level with this point, which will give you that angle going down there. These are just about, an eighth of an inch. It's more like um, your seam allowance when you're sewing, just so that when they fold over, you've got something to glue or to attach to these ones. Okay, that's all they are. Just so everything is tucked in, you don't see any seamed areas or anything else like with these ones. So if you, f I will put this back up again at the end of the video 
just in case you've got all through the video, it's not that hard to make, and you've decided you do like it, I'll put that back up again so that you can screenshot it and take it off that. I hope that helps. These, as I said, ended up being quite easy. Um, here's a little one I did this morning just prior to doing the video so that now he just folds in there so that they're all done. As I said, I did one once I'd finally worked out this template and all the rest and I was quite happy with it. I did one in my current journal um, here. So I've already got one sitting in this journal. I've got it going that way so that it lifts up and then I just have an old invoice. Well, one that I've oldened. Is that a word? <laughs> so that can tuck in. The reason I like these, and this one's just got a flat one, means that I can put a tag or a journal bit in there with a little bit of a dangle or something chunky at the top so that it'll allow these to sit out a little bit. It then just closes and it's just a different pocket. You must know by now I love all my pockets and all the rest. So it's a little different pocket or envelope. So I don't know, what are we going to call it? An envelope, a pocket, six of one, half a dozen of the other. We'll have to wait until the video goes up and I'll try and work my head around it and work out what I'm going to call it. So I'll set that to the side. All right, as you can see, I then played around and played around. You can see where I've joined bits to get exactly what I was after. So, for today's one, they work really well on 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. Let's face it, I'm just trying to get through all my 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. They are a little bit too wide. Um, it's digital that I was playing with. Um, so you can see this is a normal A4 size. Now I think A4 in Australia is slightly larger than your letter size in America. If you're in America, Europe, I think, have the same A4 size as we do, but it fits that way. But because I wanted this four and a half inches in width, you can see that it doesn't quite fit. So if you shrink your measurement down a little bit that way, it'll fit on a standard A4 or letter size. So all I do, once I've done, done my template, and I suggest you do the same thing, do a template out of, this is just out of a craft card, slightly heavier than copy paper, and this will be my template that then goes into my template book. I just sit it down, and trace around it. So much easier. Once I've worked out my measurements, I've worked out my measurements. I don't need to keep measuring. So I've worked out my measurements. I've traced around it. The dashed lines are your score lines or fold lines. So I've already gone through. There's not that many. Through here, through here, down, down, etc. So this is just ready now to cut out which I can do, and I meant to cut it out prior to the video starting. Sorry, um, won't take that long. And with most of my templates, if they're slightly wonky once I've cut them out, I just keep cutting and rearranging as I go so that it all folds back in. There's no mistakes. It's just a matter of re-squishing it a certain way, trimming different things, and they will work out each time. Just because something's not completely aligned, don't throw it out. Just re-squish it, refold it, and you'll be fine. Let's say paper doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> so we want to use our paper and let yeah, we all know we've got way too much paper. We all need paper like a hole in the head. Um but don't chuck it out unnecessarily. So It'll just keep working no matter what you do. Just realign it, re-trim it as you go. Um, I think I'd be far better off using my knife. I'm a knife girl. I like my knife. 
and I can do that so much better. So just bear with me. Where am I up to? There. See, and I already go wonky when I'm cutting around my template anyway. So it's just a matter of reworking it when you go to fold it. Down here. Down there. There's not that many cuts in it. See, now my ruler should be straight, you'd think. Yet that line is definitely not straight. So, and let's face it, once you've used a template a couple of times, it does tend to get um, a little bit wonky. And if your pencil is not quite sharp, you'll end up with a fatter line than what you started with. Done that, done that, done that. Just need to go around to my circle at the top. Because I can't do this with my blade without my with my blade. Because it's a smaller circle, it's my scissors that are actually turning instead of the paper. And again, don't concern yourself if your semicircle is not wonderfully straight. That's what ink's for. Right, there's our template. And I will utilise all that. Right, I've also traced around my circle, my thumb hole, just so that when I sit my punch in, I know exactly where I'm going. So I'm going to, I've already scored my score lines. Slightly. See, and this one's way higher than it should be, but we can just trim that off. That's not a problem. Down. Try and keep it fairly straight as you go. Now, I've traced around this on what will become the inside edge because I'm lazy and we all know that, um, because that way I don't have to rub out so many pencil lines. Now, this one goes the other way. So I've already scored it, but what I'm doing is just taking it back to that edge. Score, give him a burnish down that way. Do the same with your other side and going back to that edge. I hope my head is not in shot. All right, now we've got our little seam allowances. And I know that's not what they're called in paper. What are they called in paper? Um, I had a background in sewing, so it's a seam allowance. <laughs> They've always been seam allowances when I'm doing them with paper, and I know that's not the word. There must be a word. A glue allowance, would they be called? Who would know? Right, and then my top section, which technically should make a straight line across there. Technically, I said. Right, there are folds. So it's at this point you fold it and see what lines up. If you're anything like me, could be a lot, could be nothing. So these are going to go in. This is going to go up there. <gasps> That's not too bad. <laughs> now, here's a little bit tight. When I want to fold that, it's a little bit tight. It's caught up there. So all I'm going to do is trim just a whisper off that one it can be lower it doesn't necessarily mean need to be right up to the edge so I haven't taken that much off and I do need I just put a V in those just so that there's not so much bulk right at the top and I've done the same thing down here so that there's not as much bulk right at the in the corners 
So let's have a look again and see if that wants to fold. He's still a little bit tight. You can keep taking it off, you just can't put it back on. So bit by bit, you can work out where you want to go. If you've taken too much off, you may need to redo your thumb hole just a little bit larger, let's face it. If you keep going down, you'll have no thumb hole left. Right, so now I've got that one that's, and you can see I'm way off my pencil line. I just trim a little bit off that. A little bit off that, take that back to the corner. As I said before, my um, I trace around it, but doesn't mean I'm necessarily right on the line. And what's that one like? That one's pretty good on that side. Now we're right. No, and down. There you go. So the other thing I do with mine is I put a slit for this to go into. The easiest way I find to do this slit, I'm actually going to edge that in ink first because at the moment you really can't see where this is. So if I edge it in ink, you'll see a bit easier where we are. And I'm just going to put a little bit. So really, it's just giving it a border. It's taking away the white edge of it. But now what will happen, it'll mean when I fold it, we can see more where that line is. Right, my pencil. So if I set my ruler on that line and I mark where my circle, semicircle is going, I've gone down there, and I've gone down there. Fold it back out. Try and find those lines. Sit that straight. So this bit you will need a knife for, unfortunately. If you're not into knives, um, maybe, maybe get a paper piercer and put a couple of lines in there with your ruler which will be enough to get your scissors into. That, oh, sorry, that could be an option. So I'm going, there's that mark and there's that mark. And I wanna go just a little bit past them. And find that mark, which is there. So all I've done is made a little bit of a slit. So hopefully, what will happen now, it tucks in like that. Okay. They're a little bit tight getting in and out when you first do them. Over time, they open beautifully. Um, my template one, I nearly ripped because it was a thinner weight. Thicker than copy paper, but slightly lighter weight than the double-sided cardstock. I like the double-sided cardstock because it gives me my inner piece already. Now, you could use single-sided. That would be fine. Oh, I want to actually round my edges back to my little template that I've got, as you've seen before. Because my corner rounder won't go in. This is my standard corner rounder. But because of this I don't want to bend it unnecessarily so I find it's easier with my my little template that's got my little curves on it that I've made and that is just off the normal corner rounder and I can sit that on because it's acetate I can run my scissors around it without running the risk of cutting it too much and just follow around my acetate do the same on this side. So I've turned it over so that I can run it down the side. And that just gives me a little bit of a rounded edge. Sit you back in there. So now when I ink around, I've got my rounded edge. Now, what's going to be seen up here? So we'll do that one don't need to do this one 
do my outer edge on there, depending, of course, on whether, don't know where it is, don't know where it is. What did I do with the real one? Right here. Depending on whether you're going to attach it in a journal or actually have it loose as another little envelope that you can move will depend on whether you want to ink the back edge or not. So this one I've inked the back edge and it'll probably be used as a little pocket, as in a little pocket type thing. So an envelope in a pocket. Um, whereas my other one, as I said, I actually adhered that into my journal so I didn't need to do the back edge of it. So I want to do all my folds. I'll do the back of this one, done that. Done that, done that, done that. Do the inside edge of that one. Now, what I also like to do with mine is the inside one of that, because that's what you see when you undo it. You see this. So for me, I like to ink that edge there. So I'll just fold it back on itself, ink it one way, turn it over, ink it the other way. I have no idea what time I started, sorry girls. I don't know. Um, so the, we might have a really quick one. So now what you've got is that. Did I do around there? I did, but let's do a little bit more. Because this is a, excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. Because this is a darker patterned paper, I needed a little bit more. Right, let's put this guy together again. All you're going to do is run bead of glue up those two edges. That's the only adhesion it needs. Um, I find, so I'll either use my wet glue if I've got time to play around and all the rest. If I haven't, what I tend to use is double-sided tape. Just the three mil. So double-sided tape comes in three mil, six mil, and 12 mil. I'm assuming in America it comes in the same sizes. So there's a mil over here. So that one, that's half of that one, and that one's half of that one. So the little fine double-sided tape works really, really well, and I don't have any drying time. So when I put it down, I want to make sure it's right on the edge, as in the folded edge. Not necessarily the outside edge, I want it on the folded edge. I'm going to move that paper piercer because the noise of that on the glass is horrendous. Same with this side. Over. Right, that's it. That's the only adhesion we've got. So give them a good push if you're using double-sided tape. And I will do one side at a time. And for me, because usually it's been a little bit wonky, I like wonky, and I'll just work my way up so that this edge is right against it. Uh, straight down there. That is a little bit higher than that now. So, probably should have checked that one prior to gluing. That didn't go well, did it? Oh. 
Let's just go down now. Better. Look at that. See? Fixed. All right. This one, exactly the same way. I probably should have checked this one before we stuck it together, but anyway. Down. No, this one's beautiful. All right. There it is. How easy and quick and simple is that? The main thing is getting your template done. Once you've got that template done. Hang on. If I just refold that out that way, it might sit flat for you, mightn't it? Let's have a look. Don't know if you can hear my daughter coughing in the background. She's fine. She's just got one of these, you know, colds that are going around because colds back, colds and stuff are back big time this year. <laughs> because let's face it, nobody had anything to do with anybody last year. So it is just cold. But yeah. Right. So there's our template. Please screenshot that. Play around with them. They are so fun to use. Have we had enough time to screenshot that? I'm hoping. All right. So play around with them. They're fun. They're easy. We've got one. We've got two. And I'll pull my other one out of my journal. This, of course, is the journal that I'm working in. So none of my pages. Now, I'll pull that out. So, and then there's that one. I hope you've enjoyed those. How about I turn it that way so you can actually see it. I hope you've enjoyed those. They are a very quick little pocket. I hope I am in shot. I can come down. I can come down. Can we see that one as well? Enjoy them. Make lots of them. Have them made sitting on your desk, sitting in your little areas where we've all got that stuff that's made just waiting. Do them in the colours you want, anything you like. Decorate them as much or as little as you like. They're a great fun thing, little thing to make and you can literally tuck anything in them. I hope you've enjoyed it, everybody. Thank you. Until next time, bye.